Today we're going to talk about arrow functions in ES2015. We've been using them a ton in this series, but haven't actually explained them in depth yet. Well, the time has come. Arrow functions are more than just a way to omit the function keyword and save a few characters of code. They also behave differently than ordinary ES5 functions in some useful ways. First, let's establish some data. Now, here's an ordinary ES5 function. So that's just going to log each of the team's names. There we go. So that function takes an array, loops through it, and console logs each value. Nothing special here. Let's move on to an arrow function like this. That's doing the same basic thing. Yeah, but it helps if you spell things properly. There we go. We're also using ES2015's for of loop there, but it's the same basic deal. Loop through the members and do something. That's not really much different from the first function we wrote, and I can't say I blame you if you're wondering, what's the point? Well, let's talk about ways to shorten arrow functions down. For one thing, the one we just wrote is actually doing something unnecessary. If an arrow function only takes a single argument, you don't need to put parentheses around it. So you could just do something like this. That'll do another five items in the console. Just like that. So, great. That saves you two characters. That's not very exciting. So let's talk about explicit versus implicit returns. Explicit returns are when a function, well, explicitly returns something. That is to say, there's a specific line in the function that starts with return and then describes what the function should return, like this. That's going to give us a value of 8. Yep. That's the only way ES5 functions work. But ES2015 arrow functions introduce the concept of implicit returns, which is awesome, because it's both highly readable and much shorter. Check this out. That's going to give us an uppercase Gamora. So, if you don't have any open or closed braces and you just put your return value on the same line, the arrow function automatically understands that you're saying return name dot to uppercase. This is a really great code shortener that you'll find yourself using all the time, especially when using functionality like array.map. Speaking of which, let's do that while also showing how to write an arrow function that doesn't take any arguments. Here's the code. That'll give us an array with all the lengths of all the members' names. So clean, so concise. We're doing two implicit returns on a single line. You can also use an underscore instead of the empty parens, which is a convention that's popular in several other languages. I don't, because I find it aesthetically displeasing. But I won't stop you. For comparison's sake, here's the ES5 version of that same function. So you're using five lines there instead of one. I can't save this and show the output, because we already have a variable named name lengths, so we'd just get an error. Anyway, the other important thing to talk about when it comes to arrow functions is how they handle scoping when it comes to that mischievous troublemaker, this. Unfortunately, that'd make this tutorial way too long, so we're going to have to talk about it next week. See you then.